And not only did Sterling have a hard time with understanding the dynamics of being an owner of a team versus perhaps him thinking he had ownership of people, he also really showed trouble with black people. And in fact, his lover, his mistress, posted a picture of her with a black man, and this was a really specific black man, it was Magic Johnson, and that really triggered him. Ramona, why did that trigger him? Yeah, and I, that, when I was reporting on this back in 2014, it became clear to me, and, and really when I, when I watched that Anderson Cooper interview that Donald Sterling did, and he just melted down, I mean, this was two weeks after the tapes come out, and we're all watching this like, oh, he's finally gonna talk, and then when he talks, I mean, he just made it all kinds of worse, right, with this? Mm -hmm. yeah. But Magic Johnson, when, he, when Anderson Cooper asked him about Magic Johnson, this is when he melts down and starts blaming Magic Johnson for getting AIDS, right? And Anderson Cooper yes. tries to say, no, he doesn't, and he says, he shouldn't be a role model. I mean, this was, I mean, this was the big meltdown, this was the trigger point, and the more I looked at this, I was like, oh, it's, there's a thing with Magic Johnson. There is a reason why Magic is the one who really sets him off. And I think it speaks to his really deep insecurity with Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers. And a lot of people don't know this, which it goes, we go through this in episode two. Mm -hmm. Donald Sterling is the guy who comes in at the end when Jerry Buss is trying to close the sale of the Lakers to lend him the last three and a half million dollars to close that sale at the last hour, okay? Mm -hmm. He's one of the visitors to the Forum Club, Jerry Buss's Forum Club, which was like yes. Studio 54 on the yes, West Coast. I've it been was there. The it was, <laughs> and you live to tell about it. It was special, yes, it was. You're still here with us today. Yes, oh, yes. Um, Donald Sterling was one of the main mm -hmm. visitors to, to, to the Forum Club that first year that Jerry Buss bought the team and the Lakers win the championship. And he turned to Jerry Buss's publicist, his name is Bob Steiner, and he says, hey, I need you to do for me what you did for Jerry. And Bob Steiner says, I, I can't do that. You'd have to buy the Lakers. Well, a few years later, he buys the San Diego Clippers and Jerry Buss vouched for him. Yes. And I think when you look at Donald Sterling's story, the tragedy of it all, um, and there's, there's many, is mm -hmm. that this should have been a rags to riches story. I mean, he was a poor kid from East LA right. whose immigrant family worked their way up and now he becomes a, a, a very successful businessman right. in real estate. And instead of just telling that story, he spends his most of his adult well, life chasing Jerry Buss and trying to well, chase it, that fame. Absolutely right. He bought the Clippers for twelve and a half million dollars, mm -hmm. sold it for two billion. I mean, hey, mm, but but the bottom but, mm -hmm. but but the bottom line is is that he wanted to be Jerry Buss in Los Angeles. That never happened. But I think as we highlight it, and we want to crystallize this, I think we got to give credit for all with all the subjects that we're touching on. We got to give credit to a couple of people. Number one, Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. Magic Johnson said, "I'll never go." to another That's Clippers right. game again. That's number one. Number two, LeBron James, Speaking yeah. Chris Paul. Yep. Chris Paul, right there, working with the Players Association. LeBron James sat up there. LeBron was calling for him to be banned. Absolutely. The Chris Paul day. was working the first day. Chris Paul was calling for that, too. And by the way, they were working behind the scenes. They were going to boycott the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They literally, that's why Adam Silver stepped up and addressed it with the level of urgency that it deserves. Could you imagine? They're going into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They're not going to show up and play unless this man is dealt with. And so when we talk about empowerment and we're talking about things of ownership, the word ownership and what have you, let's, con let's consider the evolution. We're talking about folks from the civil rights days that fought, sports figures that fought. And outside of that, this was the greatest movement we had ever seen in the modern mm -hmm. era. Because behind the scenes, those brothers were making things happen, mm -hmm. not just to get him out, but to send a message, it's a can new I, day, and we will not tolerate this kind of stuff. Can I just, uh, there, this is such a fascinating story because there's so many big societal questions layered on top of it. The appropriateness of the term owner, racism in the United States, racism in the NBA, player empowerment. Donald Sterling's racism. But I do find it fascinating, and I just want to clarify with you, Ramona, that so much of it rested upon the insecurity and mm -hmm. weakness of one man who felt like that he funded his biggest rival mm -hmm. and could never achieve the acceptance and fame that Jerry Buss and the Lakers did, and Magic Johnson came to symbolize all of that? Yes. And I think that you look in this story and, and in reporting it and writing it and telling it, I just keep coming back to this idea. <laughs> you cannot buy respect. Mm -hmm. You cannot mm -hmm. own somebody. You cannot assert your power over somebody if they don't willingly give it, mm -hmm. okay? Jerry Buss didn't have to pay people to come to his parties. Mm -hmm. People wanted to come to his parties because he treated them with respect. Mm -hmm. He didn't force his players to 
to come to his the white parties that Donald Sterling used to throw. He didn't invite people to look at them in the locker rooms. People just wanted to be around Jerry Buss because he knew how to yes. treat them. Right. Jerry Buss is a very similar guy. Yeah. Rags to riches story himself. Right. He liked the younger ladies himself, okay? <laughs> yes. But yes, he, he did. treated them with a certain level of respect and we didn't have so we don't have Vis Diviano coming after Jerry Buss. Mm. Well, what we see okay. with Donald, what we see with Donald Sterling is Sterling is he made money. You know, he he did that part, but he was not a good owner and clearly not a good person. And Stephen A, your point about athletes speaking up and using their voice to force and put pressure on the league to make a decision like that, it also is a very fascinating conversation about the empowered NBA athlete and their power also to choose where they end up in teams and free agency. And the NBA actually is is very exciting around race, choice, power of but these, these let, black let, men. Let's not. Let's not, I agree with that, but let's not dilute what Natalie pointed out because here's the bottom line. At the end of the day, when you consider all the things that we're talking about in terms of the word owner, what it means, et cetera, et cetera, they looked at Donald Sterling, not just as Donald Sterling, but to make sure you highlight it and use Donald Sterling as an example of what would not be tolerated moving forward because as you pointed out, they're looking at Donald Sterling and they're saying, you guys, the other owners, the league, you knew what he was. You mm -hmm. know what he is. Mm -hmm. Why has he been around this long? Now, they, you know, you might not have yeah. understood the nuances. How do you just get rid of a guy that owns a team? That's, that's, that's difficult to do. But they were making that statement. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.